Now I only got 16 more to go on the next mm, three or four hour. Well, here we are. I'm gonna pull the traps today. Yesterday afternoon I went and looked in some of the places where these muskrats have a tendency to disperse to once the ice is off the rivers and the ponds. And sure enough, there was a lot of muskrat activity in some of those places. And uh, so I'm here a couple weeks too late. That's kind of how it goes. I, I couldn't get here any sooner. So it only makes sense now to pull these traps. That's what I get for being busy and not getting here in time. So we'll see what we get today. We got 11 yesterday when it was all said and done. And let's go from there. Nothing. Three traps here. Not a not even a carrot has been disturbed, so not uh, not what I'd hope for. Oh yeah, got one in there. Well, I'm walking down to my favorite of all favorite sets. See how this goes. One muskrat floating. I see one trap with the carrot gone and no muskrat. And I see a second muskrat sunk. Well, that's not all bad. Two out of three here. There's a reason this is my favorite of all favorite spots. This is a very large adult muskrat right here. These, this is as big as they get. So you might be wondering how these little buggers do damage to creeks. Well, you see those teeth right there? That's what they use to chew on all those roots. So they, he comes up and he just chewing on those roots. Well, the way he exposes them, you see these really long little fingernails here they're really sharp and he just and he can really dig away a lot of mud in a short period of time a lot of bank with that and right here you see their little web feet that is how they propel themselves to really get going and then they've got this scaled tail here that is like a rudder to kind of steer them anyhow that's the trap tracking part now we're going to go to the part of how you take care of them uh, we're probably not going to duplicate the, the cooking them and everything because we've done that twice. But we're going to focus a little bit more about how you take care of any pelt and then what happens with a pelt after you ship it off to a furrier or you ship it off to an auction and what some of the end products look like. Well folks, now that the trapping is done, the idea is to take this pile of furry muskrats and convert them into Things like this, right? An uber, super wonderful, soft pair of muskrat mittens made out of natural, organic, renewable products such as that. Or if you wonder how you keep your hands warm when you're out duck hunting or ice fishing, you get a muskrat mug really soft or if you want to go really big time we didn't get a chance to do that because we couldn't find any beaver that were creating problems but beaver okay right? on a pair of beaver mats whoo those are warm or if you want a great big muff you can make a great big one out of beaver like this is or muskrats. And when you're really going all in, there you go, full flaps, right? I mean, if, if you want to be somebody impressive, go on downtown wearing your highly organic renewable resource clothing called a bomber hat. One of the important steps of going from this to this 
is knowing how to take care of these animals in the best possible way. And in the process, as you've seen in our past videos, you get yourself some muskrat hams that you can make use of, put them in the freezer, cook them someday. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step how you do this process. Rule number one, when you're taking care of any pelt that you've caught in the water is you gotta dry it off. Oh yeah. So now we're gonna get ready to walk you through the steps of how you get this pelt off this animal in a way that goes on that stretcher and is fully cared for. You need a couple good knives. This is a little Gerber Vital that I'll show you has, it's really, uh, I guess, precision use. And then this is, I don't even know what knife this is by Gerber, Gerber but it's got a really nice curve to the, to the nose there. And it works really good for the little bit of skinning you gotta do on a muskrat. Get yourself a little pull through sharpener. Um, right here, this board. I'll, once the hides are off, I'll put it on here and I'll use this little fleshing tool to get any fat and gristle off. And then, last thing you need, it's a stretcher. So before this was canned, and you'll see how this works, this muskrat was fur side in, leather side out, and it goes over this stretcher, and this is where it dries. So it doesn't take a lot. In fact, it's really easy. So you just hold this back here, and I can normally do these really fast, but for purposes of instruction, I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. And you're trying to go along this hairline and your point that you're trying to get to is right here. You'll see where the knife blade comes out right there at the base of the tail. And so you've got to cut all the way from the ankle all the way to here. Then you roll them over to this side and you do the same thing. And again, I'm getting right to right there. So I'm gonna punch it through to the other side where I know that this cut is. And I'm doing this real slow so you can see. And there you go. Now I have a cut that goes all the way across this way. And then, I hold it just like this and I pop my knife through there. And now I've removed this part of the hide right here from the tail. So then I just put my thumb in where I made that cut right there. You see where my thumb is going? And then I take my knife, put the knife through just like I did on the other side. Okay, so now I know that every place here I've got the hide and the meat separated, and now I just start pulling, just like you would with a rabbit or a squirrel or whatever. Just get your thumb under there, give it a pull. Keep doing that, keep doing that. And then you're gonna get here, because this is a male, you gotta take care of that little situation. And now, if you want to, you can cut it a little bit. You can pull it if you want. This is a really fat muskrat, so you'll see a couple things here very similar to what I always preach in my gutless videos for elk hunting, is always take your knife parallel to the hide. Perpendicular to the meat, parallel to the hide. That way you're not gonna cut a hole in it, because if you're a trapper and you're selling these for money, a hole in your hide is money out of your pocket. So I'm right here. I'm gonna take my finger or my thumb, one or the other. I'm gonna put it right through there. Now I've created a little pocket. Give it a little pull, and I'm right down to the ankle. Give it a little pull, and there you go. Right here you can see this was the cartilage where the ears were. So you know the eyes are shortly thereafter, like right there. 
you know that's the eye you, you want to have a, a pretty sharp knife when you're doing this skull work it just makes it easier to get nice clean cuts right here you're just cutting that soft tissue right there and you can pull it on a muskrat um, and you get it right out here to the end of his nose and there you go so you roll this back out hide side out you notice I'm wearing gloves, right? What we're trying to do is get all this meat that's right there, all this fat down here. You wanna get all that off there as best you can. I'm just taking this and all of that fat and gristle right there that's under the armpit, pulling that down. On a muskrat, this comes off really, really easy. Yeah, that's what was on there. So, you take him, you pull him over that wire, just like putting a sock on. All right, and you want to line him up properly. Right down here is the vent. Here's where the two front legs were. Here's his mouth. So the very first thing I do is I kind of wiggle it a little bit to get it down in here. With muskrats, you don't have to worry about stretching them super long. Uh, sometimes if you're selling them, the longer that you pull, or the more you pull on them, uh, the less density of the fur, because you're creating more surface area with the same amount of fur. Lower density fur does not do you that well. A lot of people will use a wood stretcher. I like wire stretchers for muskrats. And you can see they've got these little barbs in them. You just wrap the hide around that and you punch it through. And you give it a tug and that side's done. So the fur grater is going to, you know how I was running the hairdryer here? This is what they're gonna look at is this part right here. And they're gonna go just like that. They're gonna see if there's much density there, if there's guard hairs, if there's a bunch of fur underneath that, all that base layer. That's what they're looking for. So, take the other side of this. And again, got a little barb in the middle there, a little hook. Loosen it up. Sometimes the nose is slip on these and you don't want that to happen. So here's a little trick. The nose of a muskrat, you don't have to worry about damaging the nose. So you take a, a 16 penny nail, put it right through the nose. You come over the top and you push that down in there and now it can't pull away. And then you wanna hang this up someplace where air can circulate to it. You don't wanna let it get super hot. Because if it dries too quick, then you'll have problems of your fur cracking. There's all kinds of things that come from drying them too quick. And then I'll come out here in about two days. I'll take a, a paper towel and I'll just wipe any excess oil off. I'll look and see, okay, is there any fat that I need to get rid of? I'll trim everything away that I was talking about that could get rancid. And I'm done. So. Once you remove the muskrats from the stretching board, um, you're gonna lay them out. And the next step is to pick what I like to call the money piece, which is the front piece right on um, the front of your forehead. The next step is you gotta figure out how to make your, um, your side pieces and your ear flaps. And for um, the outside ear flaps, I just took um, the pants, good way to recycle your favorite pair of pants that you no longer wear. Um, and trace out the pattern. And then when you cut, you don't want to push all the way down. You barely want to push through and you just follow your pattern. Trace lines. And you, and you go all the way through. You don't want to push far down or you're going to cut all these hairs and I'll show you 
the next step of reinforcing everything when I'm done. And so I apply this cold tape which is sold by different furrier supply companies um, and it allows it to accept a stitch and it won't rip on you when you sew it all together and tug on it a little bit. Alright, now that we've got the muskrat all cut out and ready to sew together, I want to explain a little bit about this fur sewing machine that I'm going to use. It was specifically made to sew fur. The needle comes at you when you use it. Um, this one is a Bonus Never Stop model, made 1953. So when you're sewing fur, you want to make sure that you hide all the fur down inside the seam. You don't want the fur coming up or it will show the seam when in your finished product. So here's the outer shell with the muskrat in the Sitka open country. We gotta attach the liner. There is a muskrat Sitka camo hat for some lucky winner. I'm always interested in your comments down below. Ideas, thoughts, questions you might have, I'll do my best to answer them, but I tend to learn more from the people who leave their comments than I do from anything. So, thanks for watching. Take care.